When you press the hotkey T, you'll be able to make text on a frame by clicking and dragging across the stage to create a text box. The main things you'll be working with here in the Properties tab are the Family, which is just the fonts, Style like bolding and italics, Size, which is just the font size, and Format under the Paragraph tab, which allows you to align to the left, center, or right. These are the things that you'll be paying the most attention to, but you can mess around with other options in your free time. As we said before in Part 7, you can parent things to the camera, and this includes text. In order to parent it to the camera, you just need to click this button here and then align it to wherever you want it to appear on the camera. You can do some other neat things with this as well, so once again, feel free to mess around with that later on. This isn't only with text, but you can also parent just about anything, whether it's guide grids or fade-in squares. To do a fade-in square like, say, at the beginning of the animation, you just use the rectangle tool and make one. Click it. Use the Align window to match the canvas width and canvas height. Align it to the center width and center height, and then make it into a symbol. Make sure the camera is enabled, and click this icon on the layer with the square to parent it. Then make a tween from alpha 100 to alpha 0. On to filters then. You want to make your text stand out, so adding a glow can make it pop out more, and can make your text much easier to read. If you were to just use a solid color, it may end up extremely difficult to read, especially if you're using bright colors on top of everything. The safest option for making readable text is solid white with a black glow like the settings here. Or if you're using black bars, like uh, in this video actually, you could just put the white text over one of the bars without the glow and it'll be easy to read. Okay, so we're going to hand this over to a Shulkul to talk about font choices for a second and what goes into typography. Hey, I'm Shulkul. I have been animating for 4 years and I'm currently an undergraduate majoring in graphic design. I am here to talk more about typography and font usage. There is more to utilizing text than it looks. We see it everywhere, such as signs, websites, books, and so forth. It's similar to art in a way, giving off a kind of setting or mood based on what it is representing. There is a lot that goes into typography, but allow me to keep it simple and how to implement it into your animations. The common types of fonts are serif, sans serif, script, and decorative fonts. Serif fonts have strokes at the end of each part of the letter, and is used in traditional print publications or large passages of text. Sans serif fonts do not have an extra stroke at the end. These are considered a lot cleaner and more modern, and are generally the best kind of fonts to use in sprite animations. Decorative and script fonts serve their own niche purposes, and are best used for titles, headers, or specific design themes. As Caius mentioned, the common thing for putting type in your animations is a brightly colored fill text surrounded by a darker color or less busy background. Something else to note is how it's usually always a sans serif font, because at most, we are only reading a sentence at a time on screen, not a passage. Using a serif or unreadable decorative font with a different colored glow or drop shadow behind it continuously for story-driven animations is not very easy to read and is a very outdated look and should usually be avoided. You see it everywhere in the old generation's animations, but we are in a day and age where having a kind of font is considered archaic. So how does all of this relate to sprite animation? Well, let's look at some specific examples. In DJ's MBR vs Neil, the text is a sans serif font, with a brightly colored fill and black outline. It is incredibly clear to read. Not to mention, DJ did a great job of the colors, picking a brighter color to match the characters, and a darker outline to stand the text out more from the background. And to top it off, it is not filled with a bunch of filters and does not take away from the premise of the animation. How about an example where it does not work well? Let's look at Shoko's MBR number 1 versus Wolfarian. Is he using a sans serif font? Yes, but his watermark is near impossible to read because he has a large red glow on top of a white color surrounded by a red outline. Watermarks should be read at a glance, it should not take the attention away from the animation. The title card as well is completely overloaded with filters, which makes it incredibly messy and difficult to look at. In the last sequence of the text emotes, it features a text with a single fill color and nothing else. This looks incredibly bland and it's pretty easy to miss. However, if the text fill color was white, and then given the same fill color as a hard drop shadow, it could stand out compared to the busy backdrop. So to recap, look for a font that is easy to read, make sure the text does not blend in the background, and aim for simplicity rather than multiple filters. That's all I have to say about the specifics in using the text tool in Flash. I hope this helped you in a way, and I look forward to your future animations. Once again, I'm Amelia, and I'll see you around.